de Fédération Internationale de Football Association. FIFA. FIFA I ended up seeing United Passions because I thought it would be fun to talk about a movie that I absolutely hated. And boy, did this movie deliver. So sit back, relax, and let's talk about what is, easily, the worst movie I've seen so far in 2015. United Passions is the FIFA movie. If you're not familiar with the organization, they host the World Cup, almost every small and major televised soccer game. However, FIFA is also notorious for being a corrupt organization. There are countless articles and even books written about how terrible of an organization this is. A few weeks ago, there was a huge scandal involving different small countries, bribes, and false promises, and a whole lot of other bad stuff. And a few weeks after this, this bomb drops, and honestly, this movie is worse than that scandal. FIFA is essentially organized crime, and I say that completely serious. They steal billions of dollars from small countries, but because they have a giant fan base, it is A-OK. -okay. So this movie centers around three generations of FIFA presidents. Jules Rimet, who served from 1921 to 1954, J.O. Havelange, who served from 74 to 1998, and Step Blatter, who has served from 1998 till today. All of these are played by pretty well respected actors, including Sam Neill, Tim Roth, and Duran Depardieu. And I'm going to give credit where credit is due and say that they all did somewhat good performances. I definitely wasn't blown away, and they definitely aren't getting any Oscars, but if you compare other performances and terrible movies, this one was a lot better than that. So let's talk about the problems with this movie, because as you might have guessed, there are plenty. For one, FIFA ended up funding about 85% of this movie, and in Hollywood, it is very rare to see numbers like that. Mark Zuckerberg didn't fund 2010 Social Network, and whenever you see something like this, it is an immediate flag that there is going to be a lot of bias. FIFA wanted this movie made their way, and they were paying about $20 million to get it that way. Another red flag that popped up almost immediately was how much time that this movie took place over, a period of 74 years. Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas tagline boasts three decades of life in the Mafia which is put to shame by seven decades of life in the Mafia, I mean FIFA. This movie is about 40 minutes shorter than Goodfellas, covers 40 years more, and feels about an hour longer. There is so much garbage jam-packed. Let's look at the three main problems I have with this movie, and there are a whole lot more. First one is incohesion. This movie is so poorly made. I was struggling to understand exactly what was happening. If I wasn't familiar with the three lead actors, I have had no idea when, where, and what was happening. All the dialogue made no sense, and it was made for a movie that was not fun to watch. I'm glad that I saw the movie at home because I was literally having to pause the movie and Google something to make sure I was understanding what's happening. You have characters talking about something that was completely irrelevant to what you're just seeing, or referencing something that was totally unexplained. It just didn't work. If a movie is well made and supposed to be confusing, I have no problem being confused. But when a movie is supposed to be a biography of three presidents of a soccer organization, there should be no reason why someone who watches a handful of movies would be as confused by a simple conversation. On top of that, it was also really boring. I didn't really care about anything that was happening, and honestly it was just a boring movie. There were like three different climaxes throughout the whole movie, but none of them were entertaining or exciting at all. Another problem I had with the movie was the total and complete bias. I understood before I went into this movie that it was going to be pushing an agenda, and I didn't have a problem with that. I was hoping it would show FIFA's point of view on the scandals because there are two sides to every story, and instead of reading a biased opinion piece, I would have to see a movie that might have shown why some of the decisions were made. Nope. After watching this movie, I can say I dislike FIFA as an organization even more now. In some movies, I don't mind if there's bias. For example, in American Sniper, the story is told from the perspective of Chris Kyle. So obviously, Chris Kyle's views are going to mix, be mixed in there, along with those of his brother and wife, which differ completely from his. In this movie, there is no question as to who you should be rooting for. However, for the next reason, we're going to be see why that doesn't really happen, which is bad directing. I wouldn't have brought this up if the director hadn't made such a shtick about it, 
Frederick O'Barton, I think is how you pronounce it, who is, some, is someone who is relatively new to directing. I don't want to be bashing someone who is trying to pursue his dreams, but he did not do a good job when it came to making this movie. He went on a public tirade saying that the reason this movie ended up so poorly was the studio interference, and I have no doubt that studio interference was definitely a huge problem for him in this movie. However, there were some things that were out of the studio's reach. None of the actors were really pushed to their limits. I've seen all of these actors give performances much better than this one. The movie needed about an extra 10 minutes worth of content really to tell the story. All of the camera angles were bland. People like to complain about J.J. Abrams' lens flare. This movie blew that out of proportion. And overall, it was forgettable. Now, these aren't studio mistakes. These are mistakes made by the director. Frederick is claiming that the movie is a disaster because FIFA didn't let his creative juices flow. But I can guarantee he wasn't going to some executive begging to have better camera angles in the movie and having it turned down. I understand where he's coming from and wanting this movie off his record. But... Don't read his interview and think that it would be a perfect movie if not for studio interference, because it definitely would not be. So, overall, this movie was awful. I'm glad that it had the lowest theatrical run in cinematic history, coming in at a mighty $900. <laughs> it's so funny, I ended up paying $6 to watch it, so who knows, at this rate there might be a sequel in the works. So. Should you watch this movie? No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 On top of that, I am very proud to give this movie this year's first zero star rating. Congratulations, you earned it. On top of that, if you have seen this movie, you've earned my deepest condolences. If you haven't, make sure you keep it that way. I'm certain I'll be discussing this when Razzie season comes around. Anyway, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you are new here. And remember, this movie really did make worst movie history. Remember, you're making history. <laughs>